international reggae band Black Uhuru. In recent years, reggae has become one of the most influential and popular forms of music. When rock musicians in this country first tried to play reggae in the early 70s, they found it really confusing. It was reggae coming from Jamaica rather than from North America. Uh, it seemed a million miles from the rock and the blues styles that they'd grown up with. The unusual thing about reggae is the rhythm and the way the instruments lock together to create that rhythm. Now, the main part of the sound is the drums. So how come the sound is so different? Well, the roots, of course, go way back in Jamaican history. We're looking at more recent times. Uh, in the 50s, Jamaican bands used to play uh, a thing called Mento, which is quite close to Trinidad and Calypso. And the roots of reggae can sort of start there when this local homegrown sort of music started to be blended with American imported jazz and soul and R&B, uh, which led to uh, the invention of ska. That turned into rock steady, and then we had reggae. So, over the past 20 years, the music has been continuously developing, and now there's a thriving British reggae scene as well. But now we're going to look at the instrumental techniques, starting with the drums. The thing that really characterises uh, reggae drumming is that it usually has a half-time feel. So, uh, in all the other styles of drumming we've looked at, the snare drum comes on beats two and four, so you get this sort of rhythm. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, in reggae, the rhythm's halved. So the snare drum comes down on beat three, right in the middle of the two and four. The two and four are transferred onto the hi-hat, and they're beefed up by the guitar, so you get this sort of sound. A one, two, three, four. Right, the other interesting thing is that uh, the bass drum drops on beat three with the snare drum, right, and the the uh, snare drum itself is usually played with a rim click, like this. So you get this sound again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Okay. Now this is called a one drop, uh, and it's this that, uh, when it first came along in the late sixties, early seventies, really confused rock drummers because there's no first beat to the bar on the bass drum, which gives you the solidness of the time. It sort of floats around. It sounds like it's upside down almost. So it's, it's quite tricky to do. Uh, and because also there isn't this first beat of the bar on the bass drum, uh, very often it's pointed up by a little, <laughs> little rack on the snare drum uh, or a <laughs> sharp beat on the hi-hat like that. And the other thing you can do is uh, syncopate it. Uh, and you can use our old friend the clave rhythm like this sort of. <laughs> and so on. Um, now the other thing is, We've just played all that in straight eights, and as with the other rhythms that we've seen previously, you can have a triplets feel, so you can get the... ..and so on. So the next little bit we're going to do uh, is a triplets feel, one drop. I'm going to stick these little things in I was just talking about. Uh, and this is really the style that uh, Carlton Barrett of the Whalers made his own, OK? Two... Now, 
In the mid-70s, reggae got slower, it got heavier, it got more political, uh, and new styles emerged, known variously as rockers, uh, militant style. And this involved playing foot of the bar steppers on the bass drum. Um, but the snare drum stays firmly fixed on, uh, on the third beat again, so we've still got the half-time sort of feel. And this, by the way, is where Sly Dunbar really starts to make his mark. He's the acknowledged master of modern reggae rhythms. So we try this one. And as the 70s closed, uh, reggae had now become international, and uh, reggae drummers started to get influenced by rock and funk. So what happened was the, um, the bass drum was freed from playing four to the bar and started to syncopate around the beat a little bit more. And uh, you get this sort of style. see it the space afforded by a whole decade of reggae drummers playing half time has put a whole new perspective on rock and funk rhythms and uh, so it's led to reggae drumming I think becoming perhaps the most influential area in modern drumming over the last few years and the man who is really responsible for leading that change uh, with his rock solid and deceptively simple style is Sly Dunbar there may be a couple of thousand rhythm patterns you could play by any song. So we have to choose which one is right for the song. So, for instance, if the singer is singing something like Art Made of Stone, it's the thing is that Art Made of Stone, I could play Art Made of Stone. It wouldn't let me know, but it wouldn't flow with the, with the, with the vocal that much, you know, so. I was, I was thinking of playing uh, made us, uh, made us. That's a beat that's used you know, regular, regular, very regular, right? So I said, no, I want something different for this sound, right? So, what they're playing, I said, all right, I can try some turn. That over there, one's a bit hard, man. But playing one and that and playing it on the snare, the same thing. We get different accent, different drum falling, different notes, and they sound different. After the drums, the bass is probably the most crucial instrument in reggae. It has a very difficult job to do. It's got to fit in with the drums, sometimes holding the beat back, sometimes pushing it forward. We asked Dennis Bevel to explain. Say the beat's going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Then the bass might go. Of a timing of one, two, three, four, 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 one, two. You know, really behind the beat, almost dragging it back. Right? Those those have been the most popular. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can play almost anything. To talk about reggae bass, you've got to start with the sound, and that's really deep and bassy. Now, Jamaican music has always emphasized bass because reggae was originally recorded music which was then played on sound systems outside at big dances and events. Now, the DJs found that by turning the bass controls up to full, they could stun the audience. They've kept the bass thing really heavy ever since then. So, a big, deep sound. Now, the other thing to remember is Jeff was talking about one drops and they emphasize the third beat. Now, when you play a bass line, think in two bar patterns, and phrase to the third beat in the second bar. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Here's a pattern that does that. One, two, three, four. Now, 
And once you've got an idea for the phrasing, try missing out the first beat. Here's a pattern missing out an eighth note. Once you've missed out a bit of a beat, let's try missing out the whole of the first beat. Try a quarter beat rest. Now, another idea that you might try is to take a simple funk pattern Play it funky, then simplify it, play more laid back behind the beat, and it turns into reggae. Obviously, the drums and the guitar have got to change, of course. Something like this. These are some simple bass line ideas in reggae. Now, the top bass player in reggae today is Robbie Shakespeare. He's probably played on more hit records than any other bass player in Jamaica. We asked him what sort of things he might try on One Drop and Steppers. Well, you have a whole heap of different style. Like, you have a style like One Drop, a car like Scar, chick, cock, chick, chick, cock. Mm -hmm. like have the bass bombing around more right and the drum will just keep a steady you know steady beat right you have like a next style now would be like a slide would play the drum come and play like pop right and when the drum play that Bass would now have to foot drum, yeah, carry the beat now. So you know, the top would be well furnished and the bottom would have your feet moving. The top can do anything. Now, it's not only the rhythms you play, it's the notes you play as well. Because reggae basses tend to play phrases that create tension, and that sounds great with the up in the air feel of the rhythm. One way of doing that is to emphasize the fifth of a chord. I'm going to play a pattern that I played before, but you'll notice that the fifth is emphasised more. It's A going to E, and this will be played over an A minor chord. It's like this. Now, the idea of phrasing to a fifth of a chord has appeared in Calypso and Mento. You hear phrases like this. Now, if you take the same bass line, play it a lot slower, and with a laid back feel, you get something like reggae. don't just have to play in the major key, you can play in the minor key as well. So this example is going to use A minor and E minor. I'm going to emphasize the third beat of each bar and I'm going to phrase to the fifth of each chord. Now becomes the role of the guitar in reggae. 
Just listen to this for a moment. One, two, three, four. <laughs> like a crossover between American R&B and early ska. There was a guitarist called Ernest Wranglin who actually began skanking on the offbeat and even though reggae music today is a lot slower you've still got that distinctive guitar chop rhythm and as Jeff mentioned earlier it's like on the second and fourth beat of the bar where the snare drum would usually be in, in rock music. Now to get that sound we're going to use the technique that we looked at in funk last week which involves left hand damping. If you remember you actually fret the chord and then bring your fingers up quickly so they rest on the strings and this cuts the sound off short so like this. You can also use a double stroke like this. Or sometimes you can get a really percussive sound by just resting your hand on the strings, the left hand, so that you don't hear any of the notes sound at all, like this. So there's several variations, but the chord sequences tend to be quite simple. Songs often consist of just, you know, two or three chords. Now, another feature of reggae guitar is when you play very heavily dampened melodic riffs. And when I say dampen this time, I mean the right hand damping that we looked at in funk last week. Now, these phrases are very similar to the bass line, but they're a little bit more elaborate. And this is a style that was particularly used in rock steady and things like that. <laughs> guitar solo in reggae, the important thing is to keep it simple and melodic. I'm going to do a guitar solo now using mainly the blues scale and adding in a couple of extra notes to try and get the most melodic sound that I can. aspect of reggae is dub. In the 60s, records were made where the B-sides were instrumental versions of the A-side. The vocals were largely dubbed out. Now these proved to be really popular and with the advent of multi-track recording in Jamaica, they began to make very complex dub mixes, tracks were dropped in and out and they were treated with echo and lots of other effects. Now musicians have actually begun to imitate these studio techniques and this has led into a whole completely new area on its own. We asked Dennis Bavell to explain about live dub techniques. Somewhere along is this. You variate, you know, just deviate, right, from the, um, the beat and play something quite outside the beat, but within the tempo. Right, so it's... play something alien to what's happening, but not for too long, just long enough to make it sweet. The bass would be doing anything he wanted to do for any amount of time he'd given himself time to do it in, to get back into the mainstream of the music, right? Can you imagine um, sort of going against the tide one time in a river that's going the other way for a little while and then going back with the tide, right? So, so I say the bass line was like, um, like this. Right. And you might even go, or something. 
something, you know, and then back to... Well, first of all, say you had an ordinary two-chord pattern, right? The tune was just bubbling in two chords, right, from there. There, right? Now, keeping that in mind, right, I'd get out of that time and go... that is within right in the case of um, oh you know uh, slow it down but all within right so you give the illusion of sort of doing that uh, Dennis was mostly playing triplets, sort of, <laughs> slowing them down, speeding them up, to imitate the effect of tape echo. Now, obviously, that can be quite tricky to do. So, the best way to start working on your dub is just to drop the instruments in and out uh, every couple of bars or so. And then, uh, when you, you can get a bit more adventurous and start to copy these tape effects as you get going. But the main thing is to keep the feel of the beat in mind all the time, whatever you're doing. So I hope you can see that the basics of reggae aren't so mysterious after all. There's a certain flexibility in the music, which gives players great scope for development. Reggae is not just music, it's an attitude of mind. There's a sense of working together, and all musicians can benefit from understanding about it. We leave you with UK dub master Dennis Bavell dubbing up a storm. <laughs> Now, right? Echo the snare. I'm back in the guitar. Try a bit of reverb on it. Reverb. Yeah. Quite a harmonizer. Yeah.